Organize Me Radio, episode 29, Becoming a Certified Professional Organizer. I'm Naima Ford-Goldson. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Organize Me Radio. I'm Naima Ford-Goldson, and today's guest is the owner of Organize to Harmonize in the L.A. area, Please welcome Robin Reynolds. Welcome, Robin. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Good. I'm so excited to have you here um, because I feel like you're a person that I've been wanting to chat with for a while because you've been in this industry for a while. And so I would love to find out how did you get into the industry? How? Uh, you know what? I really don't remember, but I think actually I was reading an article and in a magazine or something, and it mentioned the National Association. And I was like, oh my God, who knew organizing was a thing? Like I had no clue. So I kind of looked into it, joined, and then as they say, the rest is history. Yeah, how did you um, come up with a name for your business? Because I really love Organize to Harmonize. I don't know, it just kind of came to me one day and then I was pretty much shocked that it was still available as a DBA because I was like, for sh I knew for sure that somebody had taken it, but it was available and I was so excited. <laughs> so I just <laughs> ran with it. <laughs> I love how that worked out for you. I know, it was just kind of kismet because I just loved the way, you know, the whole message behind it, you know, which I wanted something like that in my business name. So I was glad that it was still available. Gotcha. So what is your specialty with your business? Well, I only do residential. I don't do any business at all. So anything residential and I do, I don't know, I guess I'd consider myself more generalist um, because I also do moves and then I do uh, my favorite thing, custom closet design, which a lot of people don't do. Um, and then just kind of home inventories I do also. So I kind of am really a generalist. I don't really have one specific thing that I do unless you just want to consider it residential as opposed to business. Gotcha. I love custom closet uh, design too. Um, do you work with a company like a third party company um, or do you have someone that you work with specifically that builds out the closets for you? Just curious. Well, it depends. I work with a variety of people. It depends on someone's budget because we do them in all kinds of budgets. It depends on what their needs are and which system may work better. But I also have a cabinet maker that actually builds real custom cabinetry when we're doing things like that. That sounds so fun. I need to find a custom cabinet maker because I just, I, I work with like kind of third party companies and you right. know, yeah. design and no, custom cabinet maker will change your, change the game. Yep. It's very different price point, but it's, you know, a much uh, nicer look. Gotcha. Got it. Okay. I'm definitely going to look into that. So okay. Robin, you and I, we are both CPOs, certified professional organizers. Yes. Um, what made you decide to become a certified professional organizer and how long have you been a CPO? I think I got my CPO about six years ago. Um, and why? Because why not? You know, as an organizer, I just feel it's important for me and my business to do everything that I can do to be able to excel, to have that education, to have that um, leg up, if you will. Um, it just makes me feel better. It gives me more confidence in my business. You know, I get to say that to people. It has helped me with obtaining media opportunities. You know, the general public doesn't necessarily know so much about it, but some of them do. And some have asked, well, what kind of, you know, education or licensing or whatever do you have or do you need? Uh, it doesn't come up often. But I know that I can say it, you know, with pride that I am a CPO and it was just a, kind of a no brainer for me. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, we have, um, our industry is growing so quickly and we have so many new organizers. Um, 
do you recommend being a CPO? What would you tell them are uh, the benefits of becoming a certified professional organizer? I'm sure there are probably some who don't, maybe not even realize that uh, being CPO is a thing because they're so new to it and they're still trying to navigate the industry. Um, but is this something that you would recommend for them? And if so, why? You know, it's the kind of thing I would recommend it for everyone because it's the kind of thing that I feel that if you want to really be taken seriously and as a business, you have to invest in yourself and invest in your business. And it's not just the investing like, oh, I have business cards or I have a website. It's investing in your education and your credentials. So by doing that, it definitely, I feel, can set you apart, even if it's just for yourself, because then you have the distinction to be able to say, yes, I'm a CPO. I did the work. I put in the time, and this is what I got. So I would say it's for everybody. And it's way more doable than you think. You know, it's daunting when you think about the number of hours and everything, even though they've extended the time limit now to five years instead of three years. Even at the time when I got it, I was doing a lot of estate sales back then. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I'm ever gonna qualify because I don't have, you know, I do so many of these. But then when you break it down, like I literally took the number of hours that you needed, broke it down for three years. How much is that per year? How much is that per month? How much is that per week? And then I was like, oh, this is really doable. Like it wasn't a, as daunting as I thought it was. So, because I think it's what, 3,000 hours. Um, and when you break it all down, it literally, I think, came to about maybe 10 or 15 hours a week. So it really is doable. You just have to break it down in little pieces. You know what they say, when you want to eat an elephant, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> Definitely, I agree because I knew when I um, when I became a professional organizer, it to me it was like okay, once I'm able to, I'm gonna go ahead and take the CPO test because, like you, I feel like it makes you more credible. And why not, right? Why not invest right. in yourself and your business and your expertise, right? It does definitely help you get more opportunities, especially like media opportunities. If that's what you like. If you're if you're wanting to come off more as an expert, it definitely helps in that way. And um, so I completely, I completely agree with you. And it was very intimidating when you looked at everything that you had to have, right? And then, and exactly. then when I took the test, I was like, oh no, am I going to pass the test? Luckily, I passed the test, you know. But it was, it was definitely like intimidating, you know, throughout. But definitely something that I would do again and definitely recommend for other organizers um, just because Absolutely. it also ensures that you are getting that education piece of it too right so you right. have the tools to work with the the um, the clients in this industry that we serve now you just became the well this year became the president elect for the board of certification for professional organizers um, congratulations the BCPO thank you um, tell us what will you be doing in your role Oh, Lord. Uh, well, it's still, you know, I'm still trying to get my feet wet. There's a lot more um, information and things that I need to know than I thought before. Um, and without kind of saying too much, because I don't know what I can say and what I can, I do have lofty goals. But I want to try and make it, find a, a monetary benefit to being a CPO. Okay. So that's going to be my goal. And I have ideas of how I want to do that. It's kind of like, okay, Robin, how are you going to get to the moon? I'm like, okay, well, that ticket's $26 million. I'm like, hmm, may not be able to go just yet, but I'll try and, you know, at least break it down, you know, so if I don't, if it doesn't happen in my term, maybe, you know, it can continue. But I have some ideas of how I want to make that happen. Right. Okay. That's great. I love it. I'm excited to see what you bring to it and what changes they make and all of that. And, um, and hopefully I, I think that it might encourage, you know, some of the other women that are in our group NABPO specifically to right. you know, become CPOs as well. So kudos to you on that. I'm excited. Thank I'm you. really excited for you. 
So, okay. So you have, you've done a lot in your career in the 13, 14 years that you've been a professional organizer. You were an organizer on hoarders. Tell me about that. How in the world did you get involved in that? Well, actually, it's not as, you know, as, as a prestigious or whatever you want to call it, as it sounds. <laughs> my mentor, because I actually worked on that very early on in my business, because my mentor was uh, one of the main organizers on there. So whenever we did things locally in the LA area, then she would ask me if I wanted to be involved and I did so it was very eye-opening and it was very good experience but I did quite a few episodes and I don't normally work with hoarders in my business or those aren't the clients that I have that I normally get although I have worked with them but that's not my specialty but it's just it's very eye-opening because, you know, as on the show, they do have a therapist there also. So in talking with the, them behind the scenes, it's you just get a lot more insight into what is going on with people when they're living in that way. Mm. So what was the most difficult part of being on that show? Because you said typically you don't work with hoarders, but you have worked with hoarders before. Right. Um, what was difficult about it? Well, when you really see how people are living, it's it's just really sad because you can, I mean, there was one home, literally, the way that her home was laid out, she couldn't walk through the living room to get to the kitchen. She had to go out the front door and around the back door because the living room was piled from about three feet to the ceiling of wow. stuff. Wow. You know, and, you know, some may say it's a choice. I mean, it is also identified now as a mental illness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they can get help for it, but they have to want to get help like anything else. Does an alcoholic want help? Does an addict want help? You know, it, you have to want the help and you have to put in the work in order to get healthy. Gotcha. So, I mean, that's the hardest thing because it just breaks your heart when you see how people are living because it's unhealthy conditions for anyone. It's not healthy for anyone to live it like that. Right. Yeah. And it's like, I've, um, throughout my career, I don't typically work with hoarders either, but I have worked with, um, I'd say a, maybe a handful, less than a handful, maybe like two or three. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I agree. It definitely, um, it definitely takes a lot more than organizing, right? If yes. It's gotten to that point. It takes so much more than that. So on the flip side, um, were there any rewarding aspects to working on that show? Yeah, because when you're done and you get that transformation and then you see the joy in their face, like this is now my home, you know, that's the part that's so great because you've literally transformed somebody's life, you know, now whether or not they can maintain it, you know, will be seen. But at least for, you know, that time, they see what is possible. And at least it gives them something to aspire to. So, I mean, that's the best reward. You know, just like with working with regular clients, you know, everyday clients, you know, you do one simple thing. You don't think it's a big deal, but pretty much you have rocked their world. Like right. that's better than sliced bread, you know? Right. So it's, it's just amazing how the simplest things, you know, and when you talk about there's so much more to it than just organizing, I find that in just in everyday clients too, because it is so much, there's so much emotional stuff for people attached to things mm -hmm. that there's so much psychology that we have to or um, go through or work through with our clients sometimes. So, you know, when they get it and then they see the, the end results and they're so happy with it, that's what makes it all worthwhile. Now, realistically, how long, um, I know shows are edited, so you don't necessarily know how long it takes or how many hours the organizers are actually working in the, um, in the client's home. How long would it take to be, um, you know, in that house and organizing and decluttering and things of that nature? On the show or in, life, or in real life? 
I mean, we can do both. We can do in real life. Cause I know I have, I have clients where it takes, you know, maybe weeks, months to get them, you know, to where they exactly. want to be. Um, but I know for, but I am curious to know for the show too, for purposes of that, because I think some people think that it's almost like you snap the finger and you're organized, but that's not the case. It really does take a lot of time. Um, but on the show, I imagine that they might bring in a lot more people than what we see on the oh, show. Oh, absolutely. Is that the case? Absolutely. Because technically we only do it in two days. Wow. And but there is a team of probably about four or five organizers. There's a team of probably four to six junk callers, you know, then the therapist. So there are a lot of moving pieces, you know, in the meantime. So there's a lot that goes, you know, it can be overwhelming for people. So when you see people and they're getting overwhelmed, it's because there's so many people around their stuff and right. their stuff that is, precious to them even if it's trash mm. it's stuff that's precious to them and there's so many moving pieces that's why they get like so overwhelmed and melt down sometimes because it's a lot going on but in life I mean you know it depends on how quickly somebody wants something done because you know I say anything can be done with the right amount of people in any amount of time right right a pack I pack up a 5,000 square foot house in a day if you had the right number of people. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think, I think that's important to hear you say that because I really do think a lot of people don't realize how much time, energy, and effort goes into getting organized. Right. Let alone if you're dealing with a hoarding situation. It's not going to be done overnight. It's going to yeah. take a lot of people and a lot of resources to get that done. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So Robin, in addition to all the things that you've done, you also have written a book. Can you tell us about your book? Well, it, um, I self-published a book, A to Zen, 26 Tips to Inspire Organization. And basically it's just a mot little motivational book. So A to Zen is just kind of the letters of the alphabet. And each letter has a tip to get you inspired to or get motivated to stay organized. Just plain and simple. I wanted it as like one of those little tiny books that you get at the checkout, you know, in bookstores, but you can't self-publish like that. So I had to go the right the route where you could self-publish. Mm -hmm. But if anybody wants to publish my book, I'm very happy to let you. <laughs> I'm quite open to discussion. I love it. So it's, it's basically tips to help people get organized. So something where if they're maybe starting their organizing journey, they can flip open and, oh, letter B says this. I'm going to do this. Exactly. Today. Okay. Okay. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Okay. So one of my favorite things to ask every organizer is, um, what are some of your favorite products that you've used throughout the years? My favorite products. I love the new slimline hangers, which aren't new anymore, but those are my favorites. I actually love a plastic clear shoe box. I use those constantly, wow. um, especially because they have a lid. So I like things that you can stack. I also love command hooks because those just are easy everywhere. Yeah. And now you can find them in so many different, uh, you know, designs that they don't even look like they're plastic anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what else do I love? And Ziploc bags can be good. I don't put them everywhere, but they definitely serve a purpose. Gotcha. They definitely serve a purpose because, you know, over time they do get sticky and grimy and ooky. So, uh -huh. <laughs> but they definitely serve a purpose. They're great for traveling too, with wet swimsuits, with anything that can spill. So I do like those, especially with traveling because I've had to do that for clients too, help them pack. So it just runs the gamut as far as what I do. But those uh -huh. are some of my favorites that I kind of use all the time. Got it. Let me tell you, I love a slim hanger. Like that is the best thing, <laughs> especially when you have yeah. people who don't necessarily want to purge, you know, as much as they should purge, but it right. definitely helps to like save the space in their closet. So definitely. That's my thing too. 
but it's also good when you have bigger sizes that tend to slip off of the plastic hangers mm -hmm. because of the, the velvet or whatever it is on there. It just hugs the fabric more so it doesn't fall off the hangers as easily or if at all. Yeah. For bigger sizes because then the neckline's going to be bigger so it stays on the hanger a little bit better. I love it. I always love hearing what um, everyone's favorite products are because most times they're things that I use, but sometimes it's like, oh, well, maybe I can try that too. Hmm, you know? Right. So, what are but, yours? <laughs> what was that? What are your, your so, favorites? I love the hanger, um, the slim hanger, but I love a drawer divider. So even, <clears throat> even when it comes to like, um, you know, your, the kitchen drawers, I love yes. having like a drawer divider in there and putting like the bigger utensils on one side and then on the other side and it gives it a neat look. Something that's so simple, you know, even like with folded clothes, especially in a kid's space. I love using drawer dividers in a kid's space. Yeah. So I would definitely say those are my, those are my top two. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I also like for in closets, the shelf dividers that you can slide onto the shelf mm -hmm. so that it kind of creates a wall so you can put in between the, the jeans or the sweaters or something so they don't topple over. Those are another one of my favorites. I agree. Those are, those are good too. They really are because, you know, when you think about it, when people in their closets, in their closets are like in disarray, it's like you, you see they have their clothes stacked right but then sometimes they're like falling over and things like that and that just helps keep them stacked yeah exactly okay so robin tell me what is your greatest um achievement as a professional organizer uh, i guess honestly just being in business this long and the only thing that i do and this is how i make my living and i i you know and I'm raising a child at the same time. So this is how I support myself. I didn't, I had no goals when I first started. It was just like, I needed to do something. And I was like, okay, let's do this. Then I got laid off from my job, mm. my nine to five at the moment. So I just, there were, it was during the um, recession. So there were no jobs to be had anyway. Mm. And I was working as a personal assistant for a lot of times, for a lot of years. And I said, when rich people weren't hiring, there was a problem. Mm. I mean, you're talking people that are personal assistants are in the seven figure realm. They're not like, you know, $200,000 realm. Right. So when they're not hiring, I was like, there's a problem. So I just kind of went full steam ahead, but I had really no idea what I was doing as far as starting a business. I just kind of, ran with it like a steam engine but the fact that i was able to survive and thrive for you know going on now into my 14th year amazes me so, so that really probably has to be one of my biggest uh, accomplishments or the biggest one but then there are you know certain thing interviews or things that i might have done along the way or clients that i've got mm -hmm. That's great. And now, and now look, Madam President elect, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> I love it. Robin, I really enjoyed this conversation and um, getting to know you a little bit more. Can you tell everyone how they can find out more information about you? Well, they can always go to my website, which is organized to harmonize. And that's the number two um or they can follow me on instagram too at organize to harmonize the same number two all right robin thank you so much i really enjoyed this thank you for having me this was so much fun i enjoyed it thank you all right everyone thank you so much for tuning in and be sure to tune in next time for an all-new episode thank you so much for joining me today and make sure you follow me on all social media platforms and remember get organized go further you're listening to Organize Me Radio. I'm Naima Ford-Goldson.